Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of Make It, Own It, Work It. Um, my name is Julie, and today we're going to be doing um, a DIY knotwork bracelet. So here's one design that I have that I'll show you today. You can see it's got a nice twist in it. Um, and another design I'll be showing you is this one, which is flat. Um, this would make a great gift or just a nice way to meditate. Um, so I'm going to switch my camera angle around so you can see my hands rather than my face. I'm actually really excited about this project because um, it meant that I had to learn a skill that I didn't have before. So this is pretty exciting for me. Um, so for this project, you'll just need um, some kind of string or cord of your choice. This is the kind that I made this bracelet out of, and I'll be making one from scratch out of the same kind of cord. Um, you'll need a pair of scissors. Um, I've got one bead, and I've also got some tape. So what we're gonna start with, um, I'm gonna cut two pieces of this cord, and depending on um, what kind of cord or string you use, um, depending on how thick it is, um, that de defines how much you need. Um, so the center will be always one string, but um, like with with this one, I'm going to use just one additional length of string. And with this other design, since it was thin, I used a couple pieces doubled up on each side. So let's start from the beginning. I cut a length that I thought would um, wrap around somebody's wrist with quite a bit of extra uh, length to it, just because it's better to have more rather than less. I made a couple that were too short and I learned my lesson that way. So this one only needs to be about as long as someone's is, is going to fit around someone's wrist. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make a loop at the top. I'm actually gonna make this loop fairly long because we'll need that extra length at the end when we go to tie everything off. So I'm just gonna make a simple just tie the, excuse me, the start of a tie your shoe knot with the end of my string. I'm actually gonna make this loop a little bit bigger. With this, you, with this um, project, it's really nice that you can backtrack all the way through. Um, at any point in time, you can undo just about any knot until you actually cut a string. So if you feel like you have, <laughs> Uh, taken a step that feels wrong, you can just undo it that simple. So here we go. I've got my first loop and this is my first string here. So all I'm going to do now is secure it to the table and that's what the tape is for. This just helps the project stay in place while you're working on it. So I'm going to tape it right above the, uh, the knot, tape the loop down, and I'm also going to tape the bottom part as well. Ideally, we'd like it just straight and flat, um, but you don't need it down super taut. Um, actually, a little bit of wiggle room helps because you'll be passing string underneath the center part. So for my second piece of string, it's quite a bit longer. I'd say this is about six feet worth of string. So what we want to do now is find the middle of this I'm going to do that by just putting the two ends together, running my fingers along it until it folds at one spot. Then I'm just going to take that folded spot, or as near as I can to it, put it underneath, and split it. See how I'm fanning it out? Putting my finger down so it doesn't move. This will be where our first knot happens. And the reason I use so much of this uh, string for my second piece is because this is the material we're going to be making the knot work out of. So we're actually going to need quite a bit more of it to wrap around our center piece of string. So once again, just the beginning of a tie your shoe knot. That just secures it underneath this first knot we made. And I'm going to push it up against there because ideally I would like no gaps. I'm just going to knot it one more time for just extra security. All right, awesome. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to do this twist. It's actually, um, in my opinion, more simple than doing the flat knot. 
So I will show you how to do this. And you can see I've got quite a lot of string on each side. So the way that made sense to me, somebody had um, posted a video and they said draw four. So you see when I pull my string it kind of makes a four. Or if I do it this way since the camera is mirrored, that might look more like a four to you. <laughs> so I'm going to start on my uh, left side here. So I'm taking my left piece of string and making a four or just making a simple loop, laying it across my center string. Now I'm going to take the right side of my string, lay it over the axis of the left side, and I'm going to take the end of my right piece of string and pass it through my loop. Now I want it to go under the center string and into the loop made by the string on the left hand side. It might be easier to see rather than to explain, so I'm going to lift the string, pass it through, and as you can see it kind of makes a little star here. So this is underneath both of the strings. What I'm going to do is just pull it taut. You can see it's made a little loop. Once I cinch it up, it's a secure knot. Now I know it's kind of hard to see at this angle, so I'm going to Boop. There's our knot, pure and simple. All right, and I'm just going to continue that step through the whole bracelet. I'm just going to talk a little bit while I continue the same pattern. So I've made my loop, take the other side of my string, make sure it comes over the excess, underneath the center, through our loop, e -e -e. and Pull. And you saw how I evened it out so it wasn't slack on one side or the other. And you can really tighten it here. If um, you don't pull things very taut, then you'll get um, kind of loose parts of your bracelet. So it's just this step over and over again. And what happens is going to this, uh, this side each time, it's actually causing all right, hopefully we're back now. So I'm just going to go through a few quick loops to show you the beginning of our twist. And this project actually does take a certain amount of time. And what's nice about that is it can be a meditation. I feel like this actually makes a great gift because it's not just something that looks pretty, it's something that takes time and intention and a little bit of patience. But if you're thinking of someone you care for while you're making these knots, it's, I was talking to my friend about this, it's almost like spending time with them. So the time you're taking to patiently, lovingly make these knots is, is time you're giving to them. And if you're far away, say like family that lives on the other side of the country or someone you're just not able to visit right now, giving a little bit of your time and a little bit of your energy to them just make something really unique. I was actually talking to um, the same friend about a bracelet they have that was actually woven by the Dalai Lama. It was a gift from a friend that went to India. And apparently the Dalai Lama sits and braids these bracelets and focuses on good intentions or just meditates. And the idea is that those good intentions get woven into the knots. And it's not so much that, oh, it was something made by somebody who matters, it's that someone took the time and intention and is kind of solidifying that through a project and then sending it out into the world. And somehow that really captured my imagination. So I may give this to a friend or family member, or I may use it as a decoration. All right, so I've gotten quite a few loops done here. and I'll. Normally you just leave this on the table till you're done, but I'm going to pick it up so you can see the twists for yourself. So you can see we're starting to get a nice twist design. Ooh, that turned out so nice. But I'm not going to make you guys uh, sit through a whole time of me braiding this. So you can see about how much time this would take to get to the bottom of this amount of string. It's a bit time consuming, but I think it's really fun. 
So I'm gonna switch now to my other bracelet and uh, show you how to do that flat knot. I'm just clearing the table of tape so as not to get my string stuck on anything, which I was doing earlier, and I can attest that that's very frustrating. All right, so I'm just going to lay this out flat, and I'm going to tape it down just like I did the previous bracelet. All right. And as I say, the center piece, you don't need it down super super tightly against the table. You do want a little bit of wiggle room so that you can put the string underneath, but you do want it held in place. If you don't have it held in place, it kind of wriggles every which way um, out, of your, out of your grip. So with this, I've got, as you can see, two pieces of string on each side. This um, string is much thinner than the cord I was using before. So I doubled it up and I chose two different colors. I chose a green and a purple, which is, oh, there we go, that's a good light for it. Um, and it's actually making a nice um, blend of colors here. So with this, we're going to be using exactly the same knot. It's just that we'll be alternating which side the knot is on. So it is important to keep track of which side you did last. <laughs> I, I even had to kind of sing the sides to myself. Like I'll go, okay, I need to go to the left. So I'm like left, 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 make the loop on the left, <laughs> tuck through the knot on the left. There we go. Same basic concept. And if you find you're getting a snag like I have going on here, you can just pull on each string till you find which one has the slack and then tighten it and your knot will be just fine. So right, 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 making a loop on the right. Made my loop on the right, putting the left side over the excess, passing the ends of the left side under the center into that right side loop, and gathering the string. It's just that over and over again. Now to the left, over, underneath pull, through the loop, and pull. Same thing to the right, make a loop, over the excess, underneath both strings, through the loop, and pull. And it's definitely important to pull these taut at the end or else you're going to get little loose pockets throughout the bracelet. This one has it and you can't see it at this angle, but I'll show it to you when I pick it up. And I actually did knot the ends of these since there are two of them. It's kind of hard to wrangle two pieces of small string. So I just gave them a knot. I knew this was going to be more than I needed. So it just makes it easier to pass through. <laughs> All right, so we've done our loop over the excess with the right side there underneath both, through our loop, pulling, and this looks to be actually about the right size to fit around somebody's wrist. So I'll just do a couple more loops and I'll show you how to tie this off. Oh, you see it kind of came undone. You can just simply pull, <laughs> pull, now it's secure again. <laughs> And you don't have to absolutely wrench on this, but um, depending on your string and how much natural slack it has, if it's naturally stretchy, you'll probably want to give it a, a good amount of force. If it's something that's uh, kind of, I don't know, for lack of a better word, sticky, <laughs> it wants to adhere to itself more, you probably don't need quite as much force. And as you go along, um, the farther you get down, <laughs> the less string you have to wrangle, so it starts to go a little faster. All right, I'm gonna call this good. Great, all done. So what I'm gonna do now is take up my bottom piece of tape. You can discard that now. You don't need much tape for this project, just a couple pieces of regular scotch tape or masking tape even if that works better. I'm just gonna do the simple um, start of the tie your shoe knot here just to kind of secure this knot. I might even give it a double knot just for a little extra, a little extra hold. All right. So I tied the middle to my left hand side, and now I'm going to tie my left hand side to my right hand side. Um, same simple double knot. 
And as I say, this is just kind of securing the knots that we made along here, because um, they may eventually try to slip out if we just don't give them a little place to catch. Perfect. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to knot the ends of these. So this is my center string. You can see it's just the purple matches on each side. All I'm going to do now is make a simple looping knot at the end. I'm going to give this two passes through the loop just to make the knot a little bigger. Through the loop once. Through the loop twice. That second pass is always harder than the first because the loop is smaller. And just give it a tug. <clears throat> so there you end up with one fat little knot. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Ideally, I would like that to be at about the same length as the first knot. But if it's a little bit off, it just gives it character. First loop, second loop, pull. There's our first loop, second loop, and lining it up and pulling. That's pretty darn close. I'm happy with that. I'm just going to trim the excess. Perfect. You can see this end is quite uniform. Okay, what I'm going to do now is take the tape off of the top end of my bracelet. And here's where things get a little tricky, and here's where your knots are actually going to be helpful. I'm going to make a loop with this and pass the string through. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. You want to hold this together and individually pass each knot through the loop. You can try to do them all together. I could do it with this one because I had a nice big loop. So you can see they're all through this little loop I've made. I'm just going to pull them through till they're almost almost to the end and then I'm going to take this end and pull. And what's that what that's going to do is cinch that loop around the excess I have at the end. So that has essentially brought my bracelet together. So you can see that purple wraps around all those other little strings. We are actually almost done with our bracelet. This is so exciting. So I've got one bead here and I'm going to put it through put my looped end through the bead. This is just a regular pony bead that happens to have a silver finish. And then we're just going to make another beginning of the tie your shoe knot. And this is why you need excess. Before I made this loop, I, I made this too small and I had to push it through with a pencil. Uh, Giselle had to help me with a safety pin. <laughs> so you definitely want a little bit of extra there. So we've just got our loop. We'll cinch it up there. And that should in theory be big enough to hold the pony bead. If um, your knot isn't big enough, you could always um, go through the loop twice and that will gather up more string. But there we have it. We have an adjustable bracelet and you can see our flat pattern versus our twist pattern. But the ending is still the same. And what that creates is an adjustable bracelet. You can pull on those strings to oops, make it tighter or you can pull on the end to make it looser. And I think this will make a wonderful gift for someone you're thinking of. Um, you might even include a little card or just send it off knowing that it's full of your good intention and your good meditation. And if you just want to make these as decoration, or you could just meditate and hand them out to total strangers and just send a little more love into the world. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope you enjoyed this craft. Um, if you did, remember to like and share, and we will catch you next week for another Make It, Own It, Work It.